2024, that means 40 years that I've been exploring the world's most remote places in four-wheel drives, in association with the Overland Workshop. Cool. cool. Right, first time. We're trying a little um, gravel track driving just to get a a really of a, of a, a feel of the thing. Late 2022, Heiner Kleinman and I decided on a joint venture to buy and build a four-wheel drive Hiace by Bus 4x4 and building it as a technology demonstrator. Its off-road ability, of course, is a major unanswered question for us. For to achieve all that we have set out, it's to be, it's got to be a good off-road performer. And that's why we're here, driving it for the first time. Uh, it, will, it will get quite gnarly when we get in there. Well, let's see. It's your I first time now, hey? My first time driving it. You've been driving it on the on the open road and you've been saying it's extremely noisy. It's, yeah, but it's also, it's very stable. It, it, it feels good. Does it? It feels like, a, it feels a lot smaller, but at the same time it feels big because you sit so high, but it, it handles well. I'm at the park. The locker has, it's locked, fine. Cool. The indicators there, has to be in park, which is logical. So if I now go into drive, I should be in four wheel drive. Nothing comes up here telling me it's in four wheel drive, but it comes up there. Yeah, because so you've got we, a control light on that because one. Because I yeah. have a control light on that one. So, All right. Oh, these brakes are sensitive. I just climbed out of a troopy, so. So, <laughs> so we're just gonna. Now, of course, this doesn't have any kind of traction control or hill descent control or anything like that. But then again, the Troopy only got hill descent control with the very latest version. You'll have to go over that ridge there as I'm well. Going to, I'm going to go straight over the ridge just to get a feeling of it. Because I think the brake over angle will be quite good with this. Much better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It was a, one of my worries when seeing the vehicle for the first time, but I saw the, the extra long wheelbase one. I didn't see this one. I think the breakover angle is quite good actually. What is that creaking? It's, I think it's the spare wheel underneath it because it uh, moves a little bit in it its is. cradle. You're right, it's the spare wheel. It's really annoying. We'll There's another that. good reason to get that out of we'll there and get rid of that whole cradle because it looks like we'll it's going to fall apart. We'll so there's a gnarly bit ahead. Put a few scratches in it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, purposely. Yeah, <laughs> needs it. We need pinstripes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just put it into low. So I go back into park. I'm going to go low range. It's flashing. Put it into. Now it's flashing slowly. I don't know if and the button has gone out. Let's try again. There, there's a sticker there explaining how you need to do it. I'm not going to read the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe put it in you neutral? Need to put it in, you need to put it in neutral. There you go. There you go. Neutral is now in low range and uh, the center differential is locked. I'm going to go into manual and... What year are you showing me manual? I'm asking, looking for... You're in fourth gear. It's in fourth, it's in fourth, third, second. I'm now in first gear low range. I'm going to go into second gear low range. And I'm going to climb up the... The gnarly bit. I reckon it will just feel easy. Ooh. Feels solid, right? It does actually. I expected it to creak. Yeah. I expected the body thing to kind of creak as it tries to twist. It's probably pretty rigid, given that the fact it's a semi-monocoque. It's a. It's. It's not a separate ladder frame, but it does have a ladder frame. But it's using the body shell as well for stability, and it's not. Probably got n less flex than a typical pickup. Hang on here. This is the real gnarly bit. Okay. Where we can really test articulation, but I reckon we should film that from the inside and the outside. I'm going to start with the difficult line stretching the axle articulation, and if it stops, I'll make some corrections to get out. Okay, it's, it's, 
How do you turn off the uh, proximity control? Because it's got a beep and it's think it, it's seeing a, the bush there. Is there a way of turning that off? Yeah, oh, and you probably have to turn off that one. That guy. And then right. you probably have to hold that for quite some time. Being a four-wheel drive adaptation of the car, there are no signals on the dashboard itself indicating that I am in four-wheel drive or that the rear diff lock that I am now trying to engage has engaged. Well, my first impressions are very positive. My worries about clearance are unfounded. All right, that was the first time I've driven the thing at all. Uh, doesn't have good axle twist. It loses traction quite quickly. So if you're going to buy one, order one with a diff, rear diff lock, you're going to need it sooner than you might need it in other vehicles that you have driven. I'm now going to drive the Troopy. Now, I'm not making a direct comparison between the troop carrier and the van off-road, because that would be silly. However, for me personally, it's a point of reference that if I make the comparison between the two, I can learn. So at this stage, Andrew's adrenaline is spiking because he just, he just took the bus up there. And we didn't even want to make a video. We're just thinking we're going to play a little bit. But he's taking the bus up there where I pointed him to and I said like, let's do the same thing with the Troopy, film it the same way. So he's just coming back now and he's going to take the Troopy through there as well so we can compare how the two actually handle the terrain and see a direct comparison to see if the van and the Troopy are sort of on the same level there. One thing that, that occurred to me with the van. Yeah. I was thinking it was going to do this. I was expecting it to kind of lurch like this thing does. Yeah. Didn't. I know. I felt that before. Stable. It's really, but you see from the outside, I could see the axle. Yeah. It's maybe because it's so wide, the axle moves a lot in the back. You can see it. But it doesn't feel top heavy at all. No. Uh, well, we might change that with all the stuff they're going to do. <laughs> well, we add weight on the bottom as well. Yes. While I am very familiar with the True Carrier's ability off-road, this is the very first time I have engaged a four-wheel drive with this, my new Troopy. And first time with its four-cylinder engine and automatic gearbox. It's an interesting comparison, but it's not a fair comparison. I know what the Troopy can do. I know, so I just drove it as if I'd been Sunday afternoon drive. Which it is. Whereas that 
it was a bit of an experiment so I was a little cautious a little bit you know what I mean so interesting but not fair this is far better off road than that <laughs> but it's very good I, I don't think that I, I don't think that's going to disappoint us honestly don't you need to drive it now all right my turn let's see Ooh, I'm quite nervous about this don't want to break it the first go so I've got low range on center diff lock is on I'll turn the automatic engine start and stop off I'll turn the traction control off all right park sensors are off should be interesting just need to turn around now so this is my first time properly off-roading in this thing just driven the gravel track in here but that's no comparison to anything this is my little home track really where I go to test four-wheel drive I've driven the Hilux through here I've driven the 76 series through here and now I'll try to drive the high ace through here main obstacle is don't roll it don't roll it don't roll it we need more than one video with this car this also loses traction quite quickly at the moment because the tires are completely inflated I'm also gonna do a little trick I'll turn the rear diff lock on and we didn't do that it's no wonder the 70 goes through here easier <laughs> it's stable it feels solid So well, I can feel the axles moving quite well. Yeah, it doesn't want to do this part. It's good though, I can feel it all working easily. God, this is so smooth. I reckon this is gonna be an awesome off road car. Very different. I'm starting to understand why BA from the A team liked his van so much. I didn't break it. I suppose that's a win in itself. And the lines that I took, I mean, I tried two of the lines where I thought that would probably not work and it actually didn't. I think the tires are a bit too small for that. But once you take a line where you go, this is actually a possible line, it just walked up there. It's, it's easy to control. It doesn't feel top heavy and you can feel the axles just work underneath it and find their way through. I like it, I think it's really good. There will be a lot more off-road testing and experimenting ahead. A couple of warning lights have come on on the dash, so we thought we'd better climb underneath and have a quick check. It doesn't look like it. That's where you bumped it. That, that's where I bumped that's it. That's where you bumped yeah. it. I've drawn first blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's quite exposed. I mean, we haven't broken that there yet. There are a few quite exposed things, actually. Yeah, that's definitely where it needs a bash plate. Yeah. <laughs> Now it's happy again. Yeah. It just wanted a little break, I reckon. <laughs> it's probably gone, holy shit, I'm fresh out of the factory. What are you doing to me? I love it. It is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. 
We should now present to our audience what our intentions are and why we actually bought it. I actually did some research for a family that wanted to travel with six people through Australia. And then I came across this. Oh. And I thought, shit, this is nice. Okay. And then I found out a bit more about it. I told you about it. Yes. And then we saw it at the show. Yes. And then we, we test drove one. Yes. And then we thought we, we need to get one and find a project for it. Okay, can I, 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 can I describe the project as I see it? Yeah. We're going to bring in partners. The first partner was Egon. Yeah. Okay, so we obviously, we own Egon, but Egon is, the, is a co Forex Overland Egon collaboration to produce this vehicle. Egon is not going to sell high ace four wheel drives. <laughs> no. That would be, that's not what we do. <laughs> what this is, is a technology demonstrator. So all of our partners that have agreed already, and many will come on board up to now, including Egon, are going to be developing technologies and products and accessories for the perfect off-road two-person. I've always said Troopy, perfect for two people. It is great for two people. More than two people, the Troopy is not a great platform. No. The Fox idea here is we have a two-person, two-sleeper, and alternative with modular units, four people, four sleeper. That's still off-road going. That is still off-road going. You do not need to pull a trailer. Yeah, which would be the, the main thing for this. Yeah. That, so, that would change it completely because you got no other platform where you can have four people go off-road, camp inside. Doesn't uh, exist. Doesn't exist. You yeah. have to pull a trailer or be quite uncomfortable with quite complex camping gear instead of more than one tent, etc., etc. Yeah. And that's what we're going to build. Yeah, so and this was set up just as quickly as a troopy. That's that's absolutely. the main is one minute tent up, awning out, done. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the the solution to me is troopy was never good for more than two. This will be fantastic for two and fantastic for four. I sold my troopy because of that. You did? Yeah. Because Vreen and I with the troopy was brilliant as soon as Skylar came on. Even though we had three seats child seat in the front Absolutely. the the concept fell apart straight yep. away and yep. i had to sell it yeah that is what we're going to be doing over 2024 and then in 2025 we will take it on a major expedition yeah we'll decide where we both know where we think we want to take it <laughs> not sure yet i think one of them will definitely be the canning because that's it, that will set a benchmark yeah but who's going to have to be it is the benchmark for me it's a benchmark Same. who's going to drive it well We'll probably have to have a fist fight about it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna win that <laughs> one. Um, now, maybe we have to, we'll see. It's, it's still a long time away, but you know, maybe we have to swap in between. You know, we'll probably it's have gonna to. It's gonna be something special. It's probably is gonna be something. a question if you want to share your troopy with me. Actually, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually probably going to be the problem. They, the vision of this thing is just bonkers. I have nothing more to say on this at this moment. Uh, should we touch on 48 volt a bit more? Or is that premature? Well, I've already let the cat out of the bag that we're doing 48 volts. Right, okay. So give me a brief, very brief. What is the advantage of 48 volts? Well, the advantage will be we can charge batteries a lot faster. We can charge 48 volt batteries at 100 amp which means we've got 5,000 watt of charging. That's the equivalent of charging a 400 amp hour battery in one hour. That is a massive, massive advantage because you're not dealing with high currents anymore because you're dealing with a higher voltage. So voltage is four times higher, current is four times lower. Means a 5,000 watt inverter can be hooked up with a six BNS cable. But what does that mean to the user? That means you can run appliances that are a lot bigger. Right now, 12 volt, 3000 watt is the cutoff. You run an inverter like that, that's, that's the maximum you get. Otherwise, the losses in the cables are ridiculous. 48 volt, we can run an 8000 watt inverter in here, which means we can get things like instantaneous water heaters. You can do induction cooking with two or three plates if you really wanted to. You know, we'll probably find 
that we go down that path and we explore more and more what is possible. I've got a few other things in mind as well that will run directly off 48 volt that are available in the automotive industry but are not being used in the camping industry yet that I want to do some R&D in. And I really want to build an Egan product that incorporates all of these things. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be so cool. Uh, and I've been approached by some other people who also want to be part of it for some of the machinery and mechanical side, which is too early to go into that now, but really interesting stuff. Mm. Yeah. We need a roof conversion. We need that. We need an interior. Yes. Well, we've got a roof conversion potential partner. We've got an interior potential partner. We've got electrics. We've got Egon. Yeah. And there will be others. Yeah. We need a bull bar. And a rear wheel carrier, most likely. Bull bar, rear wheel carrier, off road animal. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Hello, in case you're watching. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We're over here. Yeah. Bash plates. Or off road <laughs> animal, bull bar will make this thing look just and wrap it. We need to wrap it. Oh, yeah. Rapid. Okay. All right, I think we can end the video here. Okay. Okay. Um, bye. Go and watch your like it, and then go and watch your next video on YouTube. See you next time. <laughs>